We've come now to our Friday feature movie spotlight, discovering the latest cinematic releases at the Korean box office and online. And casting their discerning eye over the films are our critics. Today we have Jason Beshevace. Jason, hello. Hello, Jango. And we also have Mark Raymond with us as well. Mark, hello. It's good to see you too. Good to see you again. Okay, so two local films this week, which is nice. The first is the perhaps more commercial one, I would say, but fairly both uh, low-key this week. The first is also a remake as well. It's called Ditto, or Tonggam in Korean, and it's a remake of the 2000 hit melodrama of the same name, uh, Yuji Tae and Kim Hanel starring in that one. Uh, people of a certain generation here in Korea, Jason, will remember it very fondly. But uh, can you tell us more about this new film? Yeah, sure. So the the original film is this much admired melodrama uh, directed by Kim Jong Won uh, and co-written by Jang Jin, uh, released back in 2000, the kind of the heyday of uh, Korean melodramas. Mm. Uh, it was actually also released, or re-released rather, in Korea uh, in 2020, so a couple of years ago. Uh, and the original film uh, it follows two students enrolled at the same school, but they're able to communicate through. Uh, through a basically an old radio mm. um, uh, but they're both from kind of different they're in different kind of uh, time periods so Yuji Tae's characters uh, he's a student in 2000 uh, and uh, or the late 90s and Kim Anno uh, plays an undergraduate in a tumultuous 1970s I think it's set in 1979 sure it's uh, a bit of a magical ham radio right so they sure, can just talk through yeah, time, amateur, yeah ham radio amateur radio mm. uh, and so in the in the remake it's essentially the same thing but somewhat with a spin on the date. So the male lead, played by Yojingu, uh, he's a mechanical engineering major in 1999. Um, and so similar period to the first film, um, but <laughs> obviously we're not living in 1999. Uh, and so the female protagonist, played by Cho uh, Yi-hyun, uh, she's uh, playing a student in 2021, so the kind of today, you know, mm. present day. Um, and so, yeah, again, they get their hands on this kind of ham radio and start communicating, discussing, you know, life, friendship. And, uh, you know, of course, this is a melodrama, so love. <laughs> uh, and it also stars uh, Kim ye yoon and uh, Na Eun-woo. Uh, it's helmed by uh, Song Young, who made uh, the indie romance Overman, uh, uh, that's actually quite decent and also the low budget thriller Go Back uh, that I wasn't so keen on uh, and so this is her third feature uh, it's the latest remake uh, following um, a couple of remakes that were released in theatres a couple of weeks ago uh, Lee Il Hyung's Remember and also uh, Yoon Jon Sok's Confession Yes, so uh, nostalgia can be quite a powerful tool to attract and move audiences and it's interesting uh, that uh, we're seeing uh, a bit more of that nowadays in Korean film and TV. Uh, but it's interesting also that this new film is looking back at the 90s nostalgically. Mm -hmm. uh, other than the fact that it's starting to make me feel rather old, that uh, <laughs> 90s is a nostalgia era now, uh, it's also quite a stark contrast from the original because mm -hmm. the character in the past is from a more tumultuous time mm -hmm. in the late 70s, early 80s in Korea compared to the 90s in Korea, of course. Mark, how does this transition fare then? And what do you think of the film? Yeah, I, I think it's a pretty decent remake and mostly because it, it does um, some structural, keeps the structure basically the same, but then makes some changes specifically with the gender, right? The fact that the male is now in the past instead of the female, which is what the original was, mm. is actually a big change. And I think the film kind of does that because, like you said, in 1999, it isn't really a particularly tumultuous period compared to 1979, which, of mm. course, and in the original film, although the movie, the original isn't really political per se, it's in the background of the fact that, you know, there are protesters going on, there are these elements you know, there's things where, you know, he predicts the assassination of the president to kind of convince her that he actually is from the future, those <laughs> kind of things. Uh, whereas this film, it, I think it focuses, it because I won't, won't give any spoilers, even though sure. people see the original, there is a kind of a bit of a plot twist at some point in the movie, and it handles it very differently here because the character is male instead of female. Mm. He acts very differently than the original film. Mm. And I think that's where the kind of, the twist is where it becomes, instead of the politics of the nation, the national politics being kind of the background, here I think it's kind of gender politics and gender relationships that's kind of in the background. And that becomes um, 
there through this character and how he reacts to this kind of news from the future, if you will. Right, so it's interesting to compare mm. the two films, mm. but does this film in itself work, do you think? Do you enjoy it? That's hard to say. I mean, I like, because uh, <laughs> I've, uh, well, well, interestingly, I hadn't seen the original. Right. Uh, okay. I watched the original. The new film yesterday, and then I watched the original today. Oh wow! And so okay. I had, so I've watched so both fresh. films in the last twenty four hours, and I enjoyed that experience. But mm. it's hard for me to separate each film individually because I was watching them more as a comparison sense. Right. And even before I saw the remake, I read, I knew the basic plot of the original, so I was going in looking for the changes, looking sure. for okay, and that's kind of and as kind of a, maybe too much of an academic. That's how I think anyway. <laughs> so so it's hard for me. I enjoyed both of the films, but on but on less on that emotional maybe level uh, than maybe the and I think the maybe. Uh, but I do think the performance in this new one, the lead perf- male performance, is pretty good. Okay. I was surprised. And, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. But, again, I think uh, I found it more for, like, uh, let's the interesting kind of parts, how it kind of dealing with even Korean cinema. Because here, like, they go to see uh, Cherie, the big blockbuster. Yeah, yeah. There's, they're, they're watching Attack of the Gas Station, right, yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, and they, Attack uh, the Gas Station. I don't know if you remember the original. You probably don't. But they're they're watching, like, Seferelli's Romeo and Juliet. So that's a real big difference, yeah, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, sure, that, that kind of stuff was, was quite, uh, I found, uh, fun to kind of look for and kind of look at. Sure. So, yeah, I enjoyed the film on that level. If I went in complete, I don't know if somebody who goes in without having seen the original as a fresh, just as a pure melodrama, I'm not sure how well it would work. But Interesting. Okay. But certainly, I thought it was, a, you know, at least a decent example of the genre. Jason, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I thought it was okay. Uh, performances were were decent. Um, I think it's interesting how because I mentioned earlier how you know the, the heyday heyday of, of Korean melodramas, two thousand, you know, late nineties or early to mid two thousands, and it seems that Korean films, if they you know they they want to be melodramatic or not necessarily melodramatic, but they want to kind of you know adopt this kind of uh, melodrama. Uh, what they tend to do is they tend to go back in time. Not always, but they often go back in time. And they, they try to capture like, the essence of, you know, what made the films work so well. Um, and I guess, I mean, it's somewhat ironic in that melodramas suggest that they're very sen- sentimental, but I think the best melodramas in Korea are actually really understated. Mm. And, you know, Christmas in August is a great example of that. Um, and yet these films, I would say that they're, 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 they're very much sentimental and they don't work as well. And it seems like they're reliant on going back in order to kind of capture what made, you know, melodrama so successful. So sure. I think it's trying to find something new. It's, it's really, really important. But I think it's a, it's a genre that struggles on its own. But you do continue to see melodrama in various forms in pretty much in so many Korean films. But sure. on its own, it's quite hard to... Uh, to do really well um, in this kind of era of streaming and uh, yeah, and the current studio system. Sure, and from the sounds of it, it sounds like it'll be hard for this new ditto to uh, challenge the original place, original's place in uh, Korean cinematic history. Okay, let's move on to our second film this week. It's a smaller indie release, uh, but it has been receiving a lot of critical acclaim. It's called The Apartment with Two Women. The Korean title is a bit different. It's called Katun Sogozu Ibn Tuyoja. And Mark, I know you want to talk about the difference in the two titles. Can you introduce it for us? <laughs> yeah, this is the debut feature from uh, Kim Se-in. Um, who was only 28 years old when she made the film, uh, premiered last year at Busan, which is where I saw it, and I believe Jason as well. And it was, it went on, it won four awards there, so very highly acclaimed out of Busan. It's gone on to play at Berlin and Udine this year, and it's finally getting its local theatrical run now. Um, and as you mentioned, yeah, the, the Apartment of Two Women is the English title. The literal translation is closer to Two Women Who Share the Same Underwear, which is a very different title, much more kind of provocative. <laughs> Gets more kind of at the, a bit of the perverse relationship between that's being examined here. Because uh, this is really kind of, uh, there are these kind of plot elements of the film. But I think it's more about this kind of character study of these two women. One is the the daughter played by... Um, Im Ji Ho, who won Best Actress at Busan for this performance, um, and her mother, um, played by Yang Mao Bok, 
who live together despite having this very contentious and even kind of violent mother-daughter relationship. And the film kind of really examines that and really their relationships almost becomes this kind of, um, you might say, almost like a third aspect of the mm. film that they have their each of their own stories, but somehow their interaction is a whole other kind of toxic kind of thing. So it's very much about this mo mother-daughter relationship, but without kind of any real sentimentality so to go back oh, to our original. No sentimentality. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, so this is not the, the melodrama in that sense, even though it does have some aspects of sure. what we might call like a psychodrama, we might say. Sure. That's yes. very pot like these kind of limited set like films that really dig into like the psychological relationship between characters. This is what this film is really going after. Yeah. Yes, it sounds like the little translation of the film is perhaps uh, more accurate and more striking for yes. the film's tone, but perhaps the uh, English title is a little less intimidating, shall we say. <laughs> uh, Jason, this is the latest in a number of uh, debut films directed by women uh, that have premiered at the Busan Film Festival over the past five years. Uh, how do you think this film compares with these uh, other acclaimed works, such as Kim Bora's House of Hummingbird and uh, Yun Dabin's Moving On? Well, they're all fantastic films. Um, it's really interesting how it's these female directors that are really uh, kind of uh, making a name for themselves uh, at Busan um, in the, yeah, the new current section or, or the vision section. Um, yeah, no, it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, actually, there were two films that screened in Busan last year that, that just took my breath away I'm, I'm not just saying that they're just really really good uh, so there's this one and there's also uh seire uh by directed by uh pak kang which is mm. uh, we haven't had a chance to talk about it so i just want to mention it briefly but it's a horror film um and actually i think it's going to be released later on this this month but uh, yeah it's uh, that's also fantastic one of the best horror debuts of recent years and this film as well yeah i mean marks is i completely agree with him like it's it's really uh, the, the acting is absolutely fantastic. The two leads, uh, it's really well written. Uh, it's really intense. So they have these kind of these these arguments that are incredibly. Um, I mean, I was just totally fixated, um, and it's you know it's a fascinating film, um, and it's 140 minutes long, but it just it just goes by so quickly. Mm, um, and uh, yeah, she's only 28 years old, I, um, as, as Mark mentioned, Kim Se-in, you know, born in uh, the 1990s. Sure. And so, yeah, fantastic film, fantastic debut. It's one of the best debuts of, of the year. And I think she's going to win a whole, t whole number of awards going forward as well. And you joined the overall positive response to the film as well? Yeah, I really like this film. I think it might be one of the, it's, it'll definitely be one of the top five Korean films of this year in terms sure, of films absolutely. that were released this year. That's pretty, pretty clear. Um, the only other films, like maybe Decision to Leave is the only film off, mm. off the top of my head that's in the same real category. And it's, um, and yeah, it, it kind of, uh, kind of remarkable how that this, this young filmmaker has this real, um, not so much that she understands the younger female character, which, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these other films directed by women are kind of coming of age films. Mm. And this film, the, the protagonist is a little bit older, but she's in her 20s. She's in this kind of generation. But how much she, gets at the female the uh the mother character is really sure. kind of the striking thing about the film how well she writes that character because the, the the movie begins almost like maybe she's just a the pure villain and the film is not right. that simple not no that it's simple. not that yeah. simple it mm -hmm. evolves mm -hmm. as the narrative progresses and um yeah it's it's a fantastic debut yeah if you're in korea please go and see it yeah For okay sure. so that was our second film the apartment with two women an emphatic two thumbs up from our critics absolutely right that's all for our movie spotlight this week jason mark thank you for your reviews and we'll see you again soon take thank care you.